Number 85, which main group atom would be expected to have the lowest second ionization energy? All right, so there's a couple of things that we could read into this question in order to get rid of a lot of elements or atoms on the periodic table. Now they say, which main group? We should know where the main group groups are on the periodic table, right? Main groups are combined into group one and two, and then you skip the transition metals. Transition metals and inner transition metals are not part of the main group. So then you would go from 13 all the way to 18. This is also known as 3A all the way to 8A. So that's V, one, two, three, A. So that gets rid of these. So no elements in here, these are your transition metals, and no elements here, these are your inner transition metals. So now you grouped it down to either this category and this category. Okay, but now which atom is it? Now they didn't say what specific group it was, they wanted to know specifically what atom was it that has the lowest second ionization energy. All right, well, we talked about ionization energy a couple times, maybe more than a couple times, but we should know the trend, right? As you go across a period, your ionization energy, i.e., will increase. And as you go down a group, your ionization energy should increase, uh, sorry, it should decrease. So with that in mind, they wanna know which one is the lowest. So that means that I should have the lowest number, AKA I should be on the way of decreasing. And that follows the group trend. As you go down, your ionization energy gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It will decrease. So now you completely got rid of majority of your atoms, right? We should know that it should be these two, francium or radium, and then these six. So now we're down to eight atoms. Which one is it though, right? The key is knowing what the difference between first ionization energy is versus second ionization energy, third, fourth, and fifth, and et cetera, et cetera. This one wants to know which one has the lowest second ionization energy. So if you're in the second ionization energy, that means that you already lost your first electron. You're on your way to losing eight. I'm sorry, you're on your way to losing the second electron. So second ionization energy, losing second electron, granted that you already lost one. Lowest means easiest to do. So if you have the lowest ionization energy in, in general, the process of losing an electron, because that's what ionization energy is, losing an electron, is the easiest to do. You don't need any energy at all. It's the lowest amount. This comes from your oxidation trends for charges, which I'm going to put over here. Oxidation trends. So this is the trends that these groups want to have. In group one, remember, we always want to be a noble gas. Noble gases are high and mighty. Basically, everybody on this periodic table wants to be like a noble gas, if they could. So that's why they will either gain or lose electrons, depending on where they are on the periodic table. Everybody in group one, so this whole chart right here, will always be a plus one charge when they try to bind with other elements. Because if, for example, if I'm looking at sodium, sodium is, has 11 electrons, right? 11 protons. But if it loses one electron, a plus one means that you lost one electron, you will become neon. 11 goes to 10. Hence, it will be a noble gas. The same thing with potassium. Potassium would be a plus one charge. It would become argon. You see? So the second group, what do you think? This would be a plus two. 
So magnesium would have to lose two electrons, aka go back two boxes to get to being neon, which is a noble gas. Calcium would have to lose two electrons to go back to being argon, etc., etc. This is still a plus three. So memorize these trends, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. And now it's actually easier for group 17, we'll start here, to actually gain electrons, right? Meaning that it would be a negative one. So chlorine could either lose seven boxes to get to neon, which is a noble gas, or it could hop one over, it could gain one electron to become argon. It's easier to gain electrons in that case. So now you start your negative trend. Negative one, negative two, negative three. And then this meets happily in the middle between plus four or minus four. Now you're probably saying like, Christina, what? Like, can you, can you please, you know, get to the answer? But this is super important because they want to know the lowest second ionization energy. So which one would want to lose its second electron? Lose means that it has to be a positive, so that gets rid of all of this, because these want to gain, and these don't lose or gain at all, so these are out. You're either down to a plus one, plus two, plus three, or plus four. Second meaning that they want to lose the second electron, so it would have to be the plus two group. So that brings us down to radium, right? Because ionization energy decreases all the way down, like we said before, so it would be radium, Ra. That would have the lowest second ionization energy. Box that answer off. What do you think if they said the lowest first ionization energy? Lowest first would be francium, because francium is always a plus one charge. And if they said lowest third ionization energy, it would be this one because that one is a plus three. It wants to lose three electrons. All right? So this is the easiest way, I think, to teach you guys how to figure, how to find the lowest second or first or third ioniz ionization energy. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this helped. If it didn't, let me know. L love to hear from you guys, whether it's good or bad. And I'll see you guys all in the next question. Don't forget to subscribe now, all right? <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.